It's my fault. I have to try to keep my questions short so that you can have a chance to speak. Oh, I don't have that much to say. It's oh, okay. yes, you do. What was it? Someone was saying something about um, writers last night. Someone was saying something about writers all have to be hands. They're all, there's a part of them that's just big, big hands. Yeah, I did hear that last night. I think that was Peter Burton. Yeah, I think so, too. That was great, his satire piece at the end. That was funny. Although, maybe it's not so satirical. Okay, sorry. So we're talking to Michael Dennis. He's an Ottawa poet, and he's here at the Ottawa International Writers Festival. Uh, a lot of big names here this year. Certainly are a lot of people I uh, look forward to see. Yeah, well, we, they have, um, they've had Pierre Burton, of course, do readings, and Patrick Watts, and Susan Musgrave, and, and you're here with them. Is that, uh, does that feel like, um, you know, vindication of what you're doing, or is that like the burden of, you know, come up and produce something? You know, it feels a little bit more like a, a little kid being taken on its first adult adventure. Um, I'm probably a little bit old to be saying that, but yeah, it's a little bit like playing with the big boys, and that's it's very exciting. Tell me something about your poetry. I find it really kind of offbeat, very intimate, sometimes disturbing. Um, there are a few in there. Um, the missing the kisses of eloquence. I I felt almost as if I was intruding, you know, on on a couple or whatever, and. Uh, Susan Musgrave says that there are often moments in people's lives that just kind of compel them desperately to to write. Is, does that do that for you? I don't. I don't think it's that sort of thing. Um, the things I choose to write about, it's not because I think they're particularly special. Um, I think they're special to the individual, but I think they're, they they reflect more universal things that we all go through, not necessarily the same in detail or, or circumstance, but. Um, the things that happens, the things that happen to our hearts, um, are things that we all share, and I think that's hopefully that's what people identify with. It's um, a sense of connection to something that says, you know, I, I'm going through the same thing that others have gone through, perhaps. Perhaps. Well, now you mentioned um, that you have a regular day. What's your regular day job? Well, it, it fluctuates. I had been saying that I hung art. Um, I work for the art bank. But I've just uh, got a contract with the Museum of Civilization. So it fluctuates. I do a variety of different things. So then that, of course, would lead to the question of why are you writing? I mean, you're not doing it for the money. That's pretty obvious. Oh, I'm rich now. Did oh, you see last night? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm not doing it for the money, although I would certainly take any money that came my way. Um, I started writing because it was something. Not, I don't think need to do is, is the right thing. It's just that it was the, the thing that felt good to do. Um, of all the things that I was doing in my life, I play a lot of sports, you know, I have other hobbies. Um, the thing that I got the most joy out of, you know, other than personal human relationships, um, was poetry. And that's never changed. Um, so, so that's the, the main reason. Then when did you make the first, I mean, many people write, but their writings would never sort of see the light of day and certainly never be published as, as you have been. So what made you think, for instance, that you had something to share with people that was enough that people would want to buy your book? That, right. Why go out on that limb? Um, for me, um, many, many years ago when I was first, I, I started writing when I was in public school, but when I first started showing people in public, like actually trying to do readings, um, very early on, I, I met a group of friends, a, a group of other like-minded souls, um, other writers, and there was a real sense of community. And um, I, I think through that, uh, uh, a sort of a, a bravery, a bravado that said, well, I can do this too. You're talking about the community, and um, I have this impression that the Ottawa writing community is quite close-knit. and people often, you know, acknowledge or thank some other writer within the community for having done something or contributed something to their work. Is that true? Is that my imagination? Is this a good well, environment? Well, I, I think it's, I think it's, a, I think it's a good environment. Um, I think there's a lot of really fine writers here and, and in that group of writers there's a lot of people with friendships with other writers. I don't think there's any sort of cohesive unity, you know, it's not like we all get together on a Friday night or anything like that. Um, but I think there is a lot of support. Um, I know there's writers in Ottawa that I greatly admire, and um, it certainly uh, really helps. It really helps um, when you hear something positive about your work from peers. 
and certainly um, a lot of writers in Ottawa are, are really generous that way. So who do you admire? Who inspires you? In, uh, who inspires me? Or are we talking about Ottawa or, or writers? Oh, okay, let's talk about Ottawa first and then we'll go Okay, wire. well, the, I, I'm remiss to say because, you know, you're always going, oh, God, I forgot. Um, I, I think John Barton <laughs> is, is a particularly extraordinary. I'm just going to talk about poetry. Um, but I think John Barton is a particularly fine poet. Um, he really impresses me every time out. Um, Nadine McGuinness is, is an excellent writer. Stephanie Bolster's writing, you know, really fine stuff. I think um, her book, Following the Governor General Award winner, is, is a Two far superior milk. book. Um, so I, I think there's all sorts of people. Yeah. And uh, Henson, who, when you were growing up and reading and that kind of thing, who kind of... Um, Earl Burney was a really big influence early on. I mean, that's one of the, one of the main... The, when I got excited about poetry early on, Earl Burney was one of the reasons I got excited about po poetry, his poem David. Um, what about E.E. E. Cummings and the lack of uh, capital letters like you like to say? Yeah, do? that's <coughs> more of a stylistic thing and... and um, more habit than any you know deeper meaning or or deeper intention and it's kind of lame that way but i just always thought it looked better <laughs> um so maybe i'll grow out of it there is there's definitely something sort of about visuals um with poetry it does look differently it doesn't have mm -hmm. the you know iambic pentameter kind of endings it's not necessarily separated into stanzas you know certain lines are longer than the others why this free verse and why not prose? Well, I, I like to think of it, I, I hate to use these terms, but I like to think of it as uh, sort of like jazz. Um, the rhythms aren't necessarily obvious, but when you listen to it and let it resonate, the, the, the rhythms hopefully become apparent. When, when the poems work, the rhythms hopefully resonate within, within the reader. And we were talking about, um, I was talking about the intimacy of some of the poems that, that you've written and certainly one of the ones that I'm thinking of that you read from your new collection as well. And any time a reader uh, engages in writing something, there is that very intimate relationship, I think. Does that not, do you ever think of that? Does that concern you at all? Well, the stuff that really concerns me, I don't write about. Oh. Um, <laughs> Like what? <laughs> well, I mean, that would be the stuff that, that you know I've chosen to keep out of the public forum. But it's you know it's never it's never reporting. It's not like taking a photograph of an event. It's an event that you're using as a catalyst to say other things. And because it's your event, um, it can be entirely ma made up, or any portion of it can be, um, you know, constructed to to fulfill the needs of the direction you wanted to go with the poem in the first place. But don't you ever think, or do you ever think when you're constructing a poem of the reaction that your reader might have, or do you pretty much filter that out and kind of say it's going to have life of its own? Yeah, I, I'm, never, I'm never writing with the intention of saying, okay, what's someone else going to think of this? Or, or how are they going to respond? I certainly think that after the fact, and, and that certainly has bearing on whether or not I use that poem or or, you know, I want my poems to have an impact. I, I, you know, I want a response. To make you feel vital, to make that person feel alive? To, when you're... Well, to make me know that the poem connected. You know, it's the same with, with, any, with any form of music. You know, when you're, when you're done a song, if the audience is sitting on their hands, it's, you know, that's a pretty clear message that you didn't connect. And what kind of feedback have you, do you, do you think that's, that message is getting out there? Do you think you are connecting? Well, you, you said message, and I, I don't really have a particular message other than um, making that connection. Um, do I think it's happening? Well, I think um, when I have the opportunity, when events like last night, you know, yes, I, I do feel um, I connected. I felt really lucky. I, you know, audiences aren't always, you don't always connect. And uh, last night was an occasion where I, I do think it happened, and it was, it was a wonderful feeling.